Look, have mercy on me. What's up, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of On the Bluff. I'm your host, Christian Fowler. Joining me, as always, my co host, Gabe Coon. Gabe, what is up, my brother? How you doing? I'm doing great. Sitting yeah. here, about to fill out my bracket, probably after the recording. Okay. Uh, do that type of thing. Probably enter into a couple pools with some buddies. You have Memphis in the Sweet 16? I have Memphis at home, because that's where they're <laughs> going to be. That's where they're oh. going to Well, I mean, they're going to be in some top 16s for uh, for transfer portal recruits, I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, hopefully, they can get down to bottom four, or top fours and top twos and top ones. Yeah. Hopefully, that's the case. But no, man, I'm, I'm I'm doing well. I went to a, a little uh, uh, wedding shower this weekend. Yeah, very nice house I was at. I mean, beautiful house out needs. Those houses are insane. Yeah, they're all fat. They're they're ridiculous. They're absolutely ridiculous. But we went to one of the bigger ones out there. And yeah. I was I was just like, holy shit. But uh, yeah, yeah, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. What about you? That was it for the weekend. Um, what else did I do? Just I wedding shower. Know. Nothing crazy. Yeah. I think that's it. I think that's it. Did you get crazy? Yeah, yeah. I t- I'll be honest, but guys, I tied one on on Saturday. <laughs> yeah. I definitely tied one on. It's been a minute. On. It's been yeah. A minute. I, I, you know, it's a good buddy, and it was his wedding shower, and we're good friends with them as a couple. Um, so yeah, I t- I tied a good one on. Yeah, and we were at that house, right? And there was free libations, right? I didn't have to pay for any of them, right? And there's free food, and we were watching conference tournament basketball. It just, it, it, it you happened. know, one thing leads to another, yeah. and then there, you, there you are. Yeah, and it was warm outside Saturday, so and I Ubered, were... and I Ubered, and I didn't drive, so that was that was also that was another a thing. Fat Uber, huh? No, I I Ubered to a friend's house, got to drive a ride over there, and then okay. we ri- ri- rode back from that house to another house, okay. the one by Kenny's house. You and then I Ubered from there. You didn't Uber home from Eads? No, not all the way from Eads. That'd no. be a little, that little would, crazy. well, I mean, Uber prices in Memphis aren't that bad. No, they're not crazy. They're not that bad. No. So. Unless it was super late. Yeah. Then it would have been. It was super late, but, but it was yeah. fine. It How was late? Fine. I mean, <laughs> probably left the house from the wedding shower at like. Eleven thirty. That's not too bad. Let's not forget, Gabe works with ninety two ninety ESPN. He's making that fat stacks over there. That's true. So, He's got plenty of Uber cash. Yeah, Ubers. But I don't have don't like Jeff Calkins money, for example. <laughs> well, no. I got hired recently. I ain't got no Jeff Calkins no, no, money no, in the no, bank. No, no. <laughs> Hell, I ain't got Jason and John money in the bank. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're climbing. You're climbing the proverbial ladder. Yes. Right I, yeah. I'm, I'm a ladder climber. Now, Giannato, right. Yeah. You have. You're way past. Well, I'm, well, I'm I mean, joking. Here's the thing. Here's I'm joking, thing. Mark. He got I'm hired joking. a few years ago before me, so I probably. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm. I don't even know if I'm in their tax bracket. I'm right? joking, Mark. And that's and that's second job. It's not. They, yeah, they, yeah, they're that's all, second do, they're all yeah. double job. Man, we're man. counting other dudes' yeah. pockets, man. It's weird. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring. Well, that you're up. a pocket watching. I am you're a you pocket watching. You MF really are, man. I apologize for that. Um, was Taylor not with you? Yeah, she was with me. Okay, okay. Yeah. She tied one on too Did on she? Saturday. Yeah, we both tied one on. Hey, and it was warm, so you were sweating for sure. <laughs> don't lie. I mean, pr- I don't remember distinctly. Like, so I didn't sweat. You know, when I when I when I checked my clothes, the mental when images I took them are off, awesome right now. When I took them off and checked them, you know, they weren't like super, you know, wet. <laughs> they weren't <laughs> wet. See, see, so, game no, the- I was not sweating like that. I okay. mean, you're acting like I, it's like the middle of heart of summer, <laughs> and it was a nighttime deal. It's not like good God. <laughs> game with a red face with a glisten of sweat right yeah. over his forehead, hugging somebody, I hugging on somebody. That. Gabe? Talking way too damn loud. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what? something like my 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 volume control <laughs> Dude, by the third beer is just like gone. Yeah, and you I are, don't know what it is. You're a touchy. You're a touchy drunk. I'm a touchy one. Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Like this? Do no, I like it's like a, it's like you ever have the people that just give you the hook? Yeah, that's yeah, me. You're a hooker. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, okay. I'm a hooker. <laughs> <Wow>. You hooker. <laughs> you're a hooker. <laughs> you're a hooker. <laughs> Clip that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm bigger than everybody. So I know. Like, so you feel like, like rest, like I'm um, drunk. But it's tired, better. It's I'm better than the big guy me. that's like you know slapping the you know yeah hitting you on the back. I think yeah. you do that too, probably. But it's okay. only to you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm way too small for that. Yeah. But it's okay. So sounds like a good weekend. It was a solid weekend. A fun weekend. Sounds like it. Yeah. Good. I slept all Sunday. Yeah, <laughs> I just that's naturally. Sat my ass on the couch, waited for Selection Sunday to hit, and then I was yeah. cool. Yeah, the hangovers are getting worse. Yeah, like, but it was different. It's like the more I've gotten older, the more it's like it takes me a couple days to get over the tired 
part the of it. Because I don't yeah. sleep well and I get fatigued and I don't drink enough water. Right. But it's not like the headache and the nausea. No, it's just like the it's just elongated. Like, yes. Yes. Like it'll get me in. Like uh, today, I woke up today just like exhausted. Yeah. Like tired. After doing absolutely after, not a dirty after thing. After laying my, on my. Being horizontal the entire day. Yeah. That's what happened yesterday. I was still tired as hell today. Isn't that such an awesome way to spend a Sunday, though? I'd say you should spend your Sundays. Yeah. Yeah. I miss football season. Yeah. <laughs> we got a while. We got a while. <laughs> we got a long time. Um, but glad you had a good weekend. And glad you did were Did you have a good weekend? Away. That's all I did. Know. I was at the beach. Okay. Nice. Uh, last minute trip. Oh. Me and Anna Ruth decided which, to go. Which beach? What we're beach? We're in Gulf Shores. Okay. Um, two did you go to Hangout? The, the, what is no, it? The Hangout? No. The old hangout. I remember no, that from college. Did not go to the hangout. Um, know what they have down in Gulf Shores? The best, and I know we're the hungriest podcast ever. Absolutely. You ever had well, some, I'm about to get into that. And I, I have to bring this up. Go for it. I, I, every time I go to Gulf Shores, get down there. Have you ever had Royal Red Shrimp? Yeah, they have it on. They have it on like all the menus down there. Oh, it's phenomenal. Phenomenal. That, I'm not the biggest shrimp guy. Oh, I don't. I, it's like it's like lobster. It's like a mini lobster. Yeah. And they charge a lot because they're the big old. Bronc. It's the yeah, they're it's huge. The big ones. They're so good though. Yeah, it was it was a good time though. We actually came back Saturday. We left Wednesday. We booked the place Tuesday night at ten o'clock. This was the most last, last minute that... spontaneous trip I've ever done. Um, but we left Wednesday morning, and like I said, came back Saturday. We had a good time. It, it, unfortunately, we didn't get a ton of sun. It was pretty cloudy. Oh, okay, it was like. Mid to low seventies. I was gonna say you're not burnt at all. No, I'm forehead, not. nose, nothing. Mm-hmm. Nope, not at all. That's um, all right. But dude, like, okay, here's the thing. It's all about perspective, right? In this world. Yeah. Okay. Would you rather be on an overcast beach on a Wednesday afternoon or a Thursday afternoon, or would you rather be working in Olive Branch, Mississippi? That the first one. Uh, e- exactly. Yeah. So you know, we didn't get necessarily the, the sunniest beach trip ever. <laughs> Nonetheless, we were on the beach. We were together. What a guy. And Glass half full. Yeah, you have to be. And Anna the, Ruth has that's changed. That's what I'm saying. This I was man. just about to say that. He has Kenny. changed the smile the on glass his face. Half full. The glass He's half like, listen, full. it doesn't matter it doesn't if it wasn't matter. sunny. I'm with my listen, best girl, and my, we're down, I'm with my girl. We're, we're down at the beach. I got I got nice What's sand that? between the toes. It's so therapeutic. It now, was, it was. I need y'all to know. <laughs> I've known Christian since he was like 19 or 20 years old, and he has never been this way. He has never He's been glass this half glass full. half full ever. Do y'all prefer the optimist or the pessimist? Optimist, optimist dude. I love this. Yeah, I love this new Christian. Yeah. The positivity is way better than the negativity. Yeah. No, Much 100%. Better. 100%. But yeah, it was a great time. I'm glad time. you had a good time. Food was... <laughs> giving you a lot of shit, but I'm glad you yeah, had a good no, time. No. We went to uh, my favorite restaurant in the whole entire world. It's called Voyagers. It's right outside of Gulf Shores, like Perdido Key area. Dude, if you're ever there... I don't care. We were we were like thirty five minutes away, and I told her I was like, "Look, we don't we have, have to." We, no, no, I said we don't <laughs> have to go because there's so many good places around here that I'll be fine with. But I was like, it is legitimately my favorite restaurant in the whole world. It's the best meal I've ever had in my life, and she's foodie like me. She's like, we love going out to eat. So it was, she was not a tough. It was either, so it was either that or the Hooters and Gulf Shores, right? No, no, it was not that. <laughs> I did not want to go to the Hooters and Gulf Shores. That is the trash can of all trash cans. Um, I've been there before, though. And Gulf enough. Shores, yeah, man, Gulf Shores has some rough crowd. Yeah, like you can hit sure. some, you can hit some rough crowd there. Yeah. Um, but no, we ended up going to Voyagers, and it was top, top tier, incredible. They have sixty day dry aged steak. It is the best steak I've ever had in my life. You were talking about my pockets, Kenny. Mercy me. You ain't never lied. 60 <laughs> day dry age ribeye, huh? Dude, Holy hell. I ate Pringles all weekend. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. It's a different. You but, know, I've, I had an expensive meal over the weekend. It was called Huey's. Yeah. That is. <laughs> and you had a 60 day dry, dry age ribeye. Dude, when you're there, you just go big. Okay. You have to. Yeah, that's fair. And it was incredible. With salt I need cr- to try Voyagers then. Yes. Salt crusted baked potato loaded. Yeah. Do they like put truffle oil on it too? No, you no, want to no, add no, that? No, no truffle oil. It wasn't that all right. fancy. All right. I was going to say, add something else to like show that you you spent some money and your pockets are deeper these days. No. All right. It was incredible though. And the first night, the place that we stayed in, the condo that we stayed in, 
there's a restaurant there, which was really nice because, you know, when you don't have to make the drive, you can just walk downstairs, right. go to the restaurant, walk up, top tier. Got some Red Snapper, top tier. There you go. She got some yeah. crab legs because she cannot turn down crab legs. That sounds I need to go to the beach here soon, man. Yeah. I need to. Yeah. Last minute. Very last minute trip. Good. But it Those was great. Be- some of the best trips. So then we come home Saturday, right? I know people are probably tuning out of this weekend <laughs> recap already. There ain't uh, a whole lot of basketball to talk about, there's boys. There's not. No, there's not. Um, we come back Saturday. We get back about 3 o'clock, and we got to leave at 4.30 to go to a wedding at the Kent downtown. <sighs> yeah. Your boy was shot. And then... So it was wedding, beginning of the reception, get the hell out. <laughs> oh, no. We stayed there till like 1030, and then we went to Silky's. That's exactly what I said on the phone today. Oh, God. It was buddy. a day. It was a day. You're tired. Yeah. Yesterday, I was I was shot yesterday, for real. Yeah. Well, hey, hey, can we talk to Kenny about this? Kenny Kenny took his trip over to Fort Worth. Yeah, yeah. Well, we always talk about ourselves, yeah. but how, how were, how were uh, your old, you and the Tiger fans and all hey. the Tiger media out in Fort Worth <laughs> getting knocked out on a damn Thursday? My weekend was awesome. I was back in Memphis. I was near. <laughs> I was back on oh, Friday. Not, I want to know about the Fort Worth trip, though, brother. Come on now. Well, I mean. I think they spent more time driving. Yeah, we did. By far, Fort Worth than covering the team. Uh, no, 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 than just being in Fort <laughs> Worth. In, in yeah. Fort Worth, it was very short lived. Um, we weren't there long. <laughs> we, yep, it's fair. Um, we we watched we watched we watched we, the Wichita State uh, Memphis game. Some of it. Roman took Christian's <laughs> place this year and uh, took his spot as my um, travel and buddy. He, and he does a phenomenal job. Roman's awesome. Maybe he's bad luck though. I think he might be bad luck. <laughs> um, but no, he uh, he can't got to my house. Christian's done this multiple times. Got to my house at 3 a.m. We took off, drove the seven and a half hours to Fort Worth. And let me guess, you didn't forget anything. I you didn't, didn't oversleep. It you wouldn't have mattered if come I come to the door in your undies. I, did, I didn't come to the door in my undies. I was ready to go. Um, I've opened the door numerous times to Christian in my undies because I was oversleeping. I'm so glad that you save that that travel aspect for me and me alone. I appreciate that. <laughs> he's, more com- hold- he's more comfortable traveling with you. I think that's that much is very clear, huh? <laughs> um, I, I would okay, but I will say this. I would love to see our guy Roman's reaction. If Kenny, if Kenny answered the door like undies. you know, cold in his eyes, underwear <laughs> yeah. on, wife, wife beater. beater. Yeah. <laughs> that would be that would be a sight. After to Roman had been like sitting in his car calling <laughs> yeah, him for twenty yeah. minutes yeah. trying to wake him up. Yeah. 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 Roman no. was probably we'd probably be working on a story before he walked right. in. He would be, and then Kenny's like, Let me let me take a shower. <laughs> 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 Kenny, not a fast morning person. Yes. Let me tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> now I was ready to go, man. I was uh, I was wide awake. I'm glad. Ready to go, prepared, had packed the car the night before. Gosh, look at you. But here's the thing. It didn't really matter. No, it did not. Because I didn't need anything. Yeah, you could have forgotten everything. I needed my computer, and I needed... That's about it. That's, like, about that's it. all I really needed. <laughs> Barely even needed to change your undies. <laughs> <Barely> <laughs> did. I didn't even shower. Yeah. Did you not? <laughs> no, I did. I okay, I was about to say, that's gross. I was going to say. Um, Golly. He lost me on that. Unless yeah. he's, got, he's got that... You see that full body deodorant <laughs> yeah. commercials? Yeah. I'm, yeah. Do, I'm Dr. Shannon Klingman. Yeah. <laughs> Wipe it anywhere. Put it in your butt crack. And you're like, Shannon, chill the hell what out. What do you it? Don't tell me that. Don't rub that in your yeah. crack and then on your arm. <laughs> and then rub it on. You weirdo. Put it on your upper lip. Yeah. I, I, Whack I, job. I did walk into my bathroom the other day and Taylor had the full body deodorant in there. And I'm like, what in the f- what's wrong with people? <laughs> what are you hey, doing? Hey, man, that might be a little too much information, bro. No, I'm, no, it, it's not like I've seen her. Like, what the? I'm just saying, I think people buy it now. Like, it's a thing. Is she cracking the deodorant? I don't know. <laughs> I hope. I hope, Taylor. I hope you're not. See, but- I put this out there, and y'all change it into something that didn't need to be. <laughs> now, t- now, now, Taylor's gonna watch this and be like, "You said I smelled like shit on your podcast." I'm like, no, I, I, just, I just, I hope she's, I, so I just hope she's not butt cracking the deodorant. <laughs> so basically, what you said is Taylor butt cracks her deodorant. Is what oh, you're saying? God. Is that what you just said? <laughs> you know what? I can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> I can neither <laughs> confirm nor deny. All right. Fair enough. Fair oh, enough. God. Well, fellas, sounds like it was... Uh, but either way, he didn't need to shower and he didn't need a cha- change of undies because they didn't stay very long. No, they didn't. We were not there long. 14 and 18. They lose to a 14 and 18, which does 18. 
And then Temple goes to the championship game. <laughs> what an uh, the conference this year was just so terribly bad. It was just terrible. So yeah. bad. Yeah. UAB got in though. I mean, I, that, I guess the parting gift for uh, Mike Oresco was for Temple to beat Florida Atlantic so they could get two teams in. Yeah. Cal- I mean, God. just insanity. And just- I, I, I just can't get over the fact, like, going into the weekend for, for Memphis, it's like, okay, maybe they don't win the tournament. Maybe they don't. But they're coming off a loss last game against Florida Atlantic. They know what's on the line. They're going to have a game against the Wichita State team they've beat twice, a game against UAB who they've beaten once. You're like, okay, first two rounds, they can get through. Then right. it'll be tough. Then you're going to have to play South Florida or whoever it is that makes it through, and then Florida Atlantic. You figure, okay, you know, Saturday, Sunday, I can predict they could lose. Yeah. But Thursday? not No one in their right mind thought Thursday against no. Wichita State. It was Who terrible. is horrible. Terrible. I, I I was not ready for the postmortem. No. Uh, not, Tigers not on, not on, th- on, on yeah, Friday right. when I went into my show. Right. It was it's just nuts. Yeah. And it and it just it, it's a highlight it highlights what is wrong with this team and the type of losses they took that put them in this position. But like we talked about last week. It doesn't give the easy way out for this team. That's dang sure. <laughs> Hell no. It, it was the hardest possible way. It, w- it went the complete that, opposite that's of that. That's where the players get up on the pre- to the to the podium, and Penny gets up there, and you have to answer some real tough questions. Tough questions. Because you knew what was on the line. And they did, what bothered me about the Florida Atlantic game and that game, that Wichita State game, is you know what's on the line. You've known what's on the line for a long time, and you are getting beat to loose balls. Right. You were getting out rebounded. Right. You weren't making the hustle plays. You're like, what in the like? I know something's been amiss with this team all year, but when your back's against the wall, when you're in that right. position to give that type of effort, to get out hustled by other teams that didn't really have much to play for, right? And and, and crazy. I, I think that the the AAC tournament further highlights how deep the problems right. went with the team this year. Because to expound on your point of we thought with this team, even though we knew all the ups and downs and some of the turmoil, it still felt like until the la- until the FAU game and then this ensuing game, so really the last week, week and a half, that if this team's back is up against the wall, they can still flip that switch and perform because they still have that talent level. <laughs> no. No, Not I, at all. I, I mean one of the worst basketball teams in the country. I think they're one what one fifty fifth, one sixtieth, something around yeah. there in the net. And that's who that's who ends your season. It, it, it ends it in such a way that it didn't even look competitive. competitive. No, but right. the other part of it is like even in that game, like I hate how many times we get into these losses. And you're like, that reminds me of the entire season because it's just like this. Because they went down early, and then in the second half, you saw them climbing back in, climbing back in, climbing back in. They weren't trying to, you know, uh, trap anybody in the half court, trying to overextend the defense. And then as soon as they get within two or three or even take a lead, they took a lead in that Wichita State game for a minute in the second half. Then they start doing that crap again, Again. and they give up wide open threes. And, of course, Wichita State knocks them down. But it's just always like this. When you think they have it, they don't have it. Yeah. When you think they're bottomed out, seemingly they're not all the way done. Like they still have a, a little bit of a push to give you, but can they sustain that? No, they never no, could. No. That's what why. That's why twenty-two and ten, done with the season. Over. No yep. nit. They're, you know, Penny set up at the podium. They didn't want to do it, and he he really did make it. He he gave you the idea. We're above it. Yeah. We're, we're above. That's what that's NIT. what it felt like. That He's it. like, I'm done. I'm done competing in nits. Period is what he's saying. Yeah. Sorry. So yeah. I'm sorry. And then obviously Laird, Laird Veach made the decision over the weekend yesterday that they were not going to do want it. it. What was more egregious to y'all in that Wichita State game? I don't know. We didn't want to talk a whole lot about it, but but in terms of that game, giving be, being down by 14 with eight minutes left, or taking the lead with three minutes left and then relinquishing it, relinquishing it again. again. That Which, what's worse? because Wichita yeah, yeah, State that. is one of the worst late game teams in the country. Yeah. They have given up multiple leads this year. You've yeah. never been out of it. I mean, they gave up a 12-point lead when the Tigers were in FedEx Forum yeah. with the last seven minutes, and hey, the Tigers hey. ended up coming back and winning by two. They give up leads. That's what Wichita State's done all year, and you somehow 
lost to the team. You somehow lost to one of the worst late game teams in the country and certainly in the conference. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you the most egregious thing to me about it is you have all these veterans that have been in, you know, conference tournament atmospheres, NCAA tournament atmospheres, and they just didn't show up. Yeah. They just didn't perform. Like, players that have been there, done that, seen those things, they just didn't show up. And that's as egregious as it gets. And I, I think I probably speak for the vast majority of Memphis fan bases. Thank God this season is over. Yeah. Like, like, thank God that this is pretty much going to be an entirely new team next year because it needs to be. And you have still, like, a small portion of people out there that are grasping at straws saying, I wish this person – I wish this person had eligibility. It could come – and it's like, no. I don't care. No, this – really like, don't. last year was a blank slate. They need it again. Because, really, I think Nick, but, jo- Nick Jordan is the only one that said he's coming back up to this point. And then you can assume Ashton Hardaway. R- right. And then past that, it's like I, I, <laughs> they might I, all be gone. John, I don't know. Jonathan Pierre's in the transfer portal. Jonathan Pierre's the first one in the transfer portal. JQ, Malco, Jordan Brown, um, Naquan Tomlin, all el- out of eligibility. Caleb Mills as well. I would imagine they could try to get a medical waiver for him potentially. I just don't know how that's going to go over. We'll, we'll see how that transpires over the next couple of weeks and months, whatever. Um, but at the end of the day, like, do you want anybody back from this team? Not, not really. I mean, Nick, Nick Jordan. I, I want Nick guys Jordan. like Nick Jordan, and I, of course, I'd take David Jones. Oh, uh, yes, naturally. Yeah. But good thing this team can't run it back because they don't need well, to. Well, it also I, listen. I am the NIT thing. I think is interesting to me. Like yeah. Not going to the NIT because I don't think this program's above it, and I think it's a bad look to act like you're above it because they've in six years they've made two NCAA tournaments, won one, one game. one game. You're not above it. You're not above it. But there was also five other teams that opted out of yeah. it uh, because they didn't make the NCAA tournament. Yeah, and- but on the other side, I'll say this: if your expectation is to make the NCAA tournament and you don't make it, I think it's I. I get the thought process behind saying we will not accept anything less than that, yeah. and that's what you know your program's about. Yeah, that, uh, that's what I was gonna say. I'll play de- devil's advocate to it. And I say it both sides. I don't yeah, think yeah. I'm not. You can play devil's advocate. I don't believe that it's like one they way or should the, yeah, have right, been in the right. NIT. I think it's probably better they're not. Yeah, I, I agree because because name a damn fan that would have tuned into that shit. Right. Well, seriously, oh, oh, yeah. I, and I, I'm not. I'm not even trying to be. I'm not even trying to be. No, you're right. Rude. I mean, but right. name a fan that wants to watch this team play in the NIT. Right. And, na- and name any player on that team that who wants, wants to play, to in, play the in the NIT. NIT. They yeah. came here for a reason to make yeah. the NCAA tournament. They wouldn't care about it. No. And and we've already seen lack of care in certain games. Imagine them in the NIT. I, that is not a brand of basketball. That I have any, I mean, any care to watch. I don't want to watch that at all. No, and 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 I think the NIT is really good for younger teams, young cores that are staying together, teams that are on the rise, first, second but, year coaches. Correct. And, and in the state that Memphis was in several years ago, uh, they went what they go the first two or three years of Penny's tenure, uh, and ended up winning it in yeah. 2019. That was okay. That's a good building block. It was a good, it was a good stepping stone. But now you're taking steps in the wrong direction, and so I, I understand not going. I understand the disappointment from Penny and from this team. Like, what's the point of us going? We know what the goal was. That goal is not going to happen regardless. It's not the 2019 season when it was a championships, a championship. It was awesome to go to the NIT and win it. No, that even if they went to the NIT and won it this year. It would mean nothing because this team is not coming back. It's not going to be the same team. It's not going to be a stepping stone. It's not going to be a building block. This isn't a freshman team that you know went through that tournament atmosphere in the NIT tournament and won it. It's nowhere near that. And at the same time, to even further that point, is, look, this team is going to be gone, and uh, Memphis needs another team for next year. Yeah. And that's what this time needs to be devoted to. What it, opened today, too. Right, right. Which opened the transfer portal opening on Monday. Like, there's no need for them to go be in preparation for games that uh, just don't matter. NIT doesn't matter. You're not going to you're not gonna gain anything from winning the NIT. Um, and so, I'll say that. Can I add one more yeah, thing yeah, to it? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I think, I mean, Penny did say, you know, I'm not going to go back to that. Or however he phrased it made it sound like, you know, we're – past that i truthfully if you were to put truth serum in him on that stage at that time he didn't want to coach that team anymore i think he was ready yeah. to be done with the I, team i don't blame him I this year bl- has been a catastrophe like this year has been horrible yes. and so why not wipe the slate clean 
move on from this team, do your exit interviews and be done with this team and start building towards next year. And, and especially while it's this fresh and you're, I, I, you would have to imagine Penny is extremely motivated right now on, okay, how do I find out where all did we go wrong? You hope that he's able to, to, to reflect on that. Where did we go wrong as a staff? What characteristics did we maybe overlook in players or, and that can be on the floor, off the floor. Where do we need to fine tune stuff to make sure that that disaster never happens again? Yeah. And, and, and so doing that while it's fresh, because I we know Penny, like Penny immediately went to a hundred percent focus on recruiting as soon as he finished that press conference on on Thursday. Right. And that's where he needs it, to be right now. And it's funny because I hear I heard like Tom Crean on ESPN. He's like, there'll be time to recruit. There'll be time to do this. There'll be time to do that. It's like when he asked to coach a team for the NIT. No, no, like it's not how it was when you were at Indiana, Tom. Right. Like you have to be ready to go. March 18th it opens, and then as the NCAA tournament goes along, some of these teams get knocked out, and what do Players they do in, in 24 hours? They're right. immediately in the in the transfer portal. Yeah. You have to immediately hit the ground running. Yes. Um. So like I have no issue with that part of it. Like I think he needs to do it right this second and. When we talk about guys he needs to focus on, think about the, two, the 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 team two years ago. Think about it that way. Yeah, you need to have guys where you know where to establish a pecking order, and yes. you need to bring in guys who play defense. What? Okay, about Penny's uh, post game. Yeah, let's get into a little bit of that. Two bits of introspection besides all the nonsense that he was saying because yeah. he did. Oh, we had the greatest plans ever. You know, they just didn't execute. It's right. like, well, it's your job to make them execute. Yeah, and then uh, uh, he said something about. Uh, you know, what went wrong? Somebody said, what went wrong this year? And he said, well, I don't know. And then he's like asking the players. He's like, do you, do you want me to ask him what went wrong? And they're yeah. like, I don't know. That You need to know that. If you want to be successful going into the future, you need to know the answer to that question. For sure. But there's two bits of introspection he brought in. One, <laughs> and I hate to be just like, duh, like obvious. He said that this team – did not have the personnel to do what he wants to do defensively. That's fair. It's like, I, we know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. We, we get that. We yeah. can see that. I just wish that on the back end, when you saw that and you, and you pointed at you it, you adjusted, you adjusted that to me, it's like, yeah, they didn't give you what you wanted defensively, but, but there was other ways yeah. to make it to work maximize. and you didn't. And the other thing he said was he's too much of a nice guy, too much of a player's coach. I don't know how to read that. I do think that in the past, you know, he's given pity minutes and he's promised too many guys too many things on the recruiting trail. But he said something to this exact thing after the Monty Bates season. Right. You know, I'm done giving pity minutes. Whoever works hard is going to play. Yeah, you know, he's the, done that. But, like, it clearly hasn't uh, – maybe it hasn't resonated or he hasn't bought into that fully yet. And yeah. The problem I have with Penny and like the words he says, a lot of those words never actually amount to action. Yeah. You know, uh, last year after the, the lost FAU, I want to get this done, you know, get my recruiting class and get the team set in June or July. Naquan Tomlin's added 11 games into the damn season. Right. You know, so like I, I just, I know he said he thinks he's done a great job and all these, he's had these type of messages where he feels like he's being a little bit victimized. I just – all I can do is hope that he uses this as a springboard and a learning a learning tool tool going, going forward. forward. But do I believe that to be the case? No, probably not. Right. But, I mean – I can hope, but that doesn't mean that, that it's actually – you know, he's actually having that introspect, introspection, looking right. himself in the mirror and seeing what he's doing wrong. But we can almost fully guarantee – that Memphis is going to have a flashy, successful offseason. Sure. You can you can almost guarantee and that. And it kind of messed up, though. Like, two years ago, when there was no drama. It was the best season. And the offseason was, like, probably the least flashy. By, by a landslide. They were the best team he's had? Yeah. I don't know. Right. But that's just... I, Right. I don't know. Like maybe he'll have the flash you want. I just I think what where he went wrong this year in the portal is he wasn't focusing on what what his system was, which clearly he needs to because he's not going to make adjustments. Yeah. He's going to be this defensive type coach. 
he went into this offseason and just saw, oh, Jordan Brown averaged 19 points and nine rebounds. Javon Quinterly, oh my gosh, 13 points per game? Oh, he's, he was a sixth man of the year in the SEC. Oh, David Jones, 14 points per game. Jaquan Walton, 14 points per game. He saw all these shiny things, and he's like, oh, let me get that. Let me get that. Yeah, you come on down, blah, blah, blah. He needs to stop getting distracted with the shiny stuff right. and, and realize what actually fits with his style of basketball. Yeah. Because if he's not going to adjust on the fly to his, his talent, he's got to bring in talent that fits what he wants to do from right. day one. Yeah. And I, I should have known this off top. We talked about Jordan Brown. We should have known he wasn't going to fit. Right. We should have known. And, Isn't and, this kind of hindsight being 2020, though? Because I think even this podcast, we were. No, 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 no. For no, sure. no I, 100% for hindsight. Sure. But I'm just giving you an idea of what I think happened, though, ultimately. Yeah. Because you saw a lot of shiny. We saw a lot of shot. Yeah, I can't, yeah like, and like that's we, where we were. Right. We we get full. If if Penny got full, of course we got full. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. Like I, that's what I'm trying to get at. It's like maybe focus less on the shiny objects and focus on personality, and focus on character. you know their character. Focus on ability as far defense, as scheme goes. Scheme ability, like yeah. that. Focus on those things more than you worry about. Oh well, he shot forty percent from three. Right. And once again, I brought it up last week. I'm going to bring it up again because it's just so fitting. The player that fit the best, the player that made the most sense for Memphis and probably would have shined at the University of Memphis and and been a huge boost to this team was TFA Leonard. You need to find guys like that on the portal. There'll be be plenty out there. Right. There'll be plenty out there. He just didn't garter the same. He left that everybody was more excited about Jaquan Walton. That's sort of what happened. Right. Just he just didn't garner the same yeah. kind of media recognition and attention. I don't know as man. the rest. And he would have. I, I don't. I can't say for certain, but I just feel like he would have been extremely good at the University of Memphis. Yeah, but here's the thing. And going back to Jonathan Pierre and the transfer portal, some of the things he said were a little wild, but I get it. He he was clearly not happy with his role because he didn't play a lot, and yeah. when Jaden came back, he didn't play at all. Um, but he did say it was so chaotic. Uh, he told Parthu Padilla the Daily Memphian like there were cancers within the locker room. Like, yeah, that's not good. That's not, not a good. good thing. It's not, it's a, not good a good thing. But with him gone, it's like it really is Nick Jordan and Ashton Hardway. And yeah. I was looking at Ken Palm today, and this is one of the most insane stats that I think needs to change for them to have more success as a program, as a program, year to year. Um, they have this thing on Ken Palm. Uh, it's an advanced metric, and it has to do with your personnel. And it's uh, minutes continuity is what the what the metric is. Yeah. There are 363 programs in college basketball. Tigers last year in their minutes continuity metric, according to Ken Palm, 341st. If you want to be a sustainable program, if you want to build a program – that has to get up. That cannot yeah. be a metric that you are at the bottom of the country in. No. Number one was FAU, by the way, in the country because they brought everybody back and they play the same play, lineups. They play, yeah, they played those guys together. And I think it's it's twofold with Penny. Yeah, you didn't have the same guys, but then you didn't play the same guys night to night. How many different starting lineups did he have? How right. many different lineups did he run out there that were unique? Right. So Obviously a lot if they were 341st. So I, I think that's something – you know, we can talk about fitting the defensive identity and all these different things. Oh, recruit better and get the team together earlier. Fix the continuity part of this program. Build the program side of it up. Yeah. Have some non-negotiables, some pillars of your program, and keep guys in it for a couple of years. I know that's harder, but you have to try to do it. And then I just think the sustained success, getting the NCAA tournament every year would be a lot easier than – Wiping the slate clean and adding a whole new team. Year Completely after year. agree because that that is going to be volatile, not only from in you know, game to game in that season, but from season to season, it's going to be so and, volatile. And you see how quick you can get burned. <laughs> Look at yeah. Jawan Howard at Michigan, man. Gone. He recruited really well up until two years ago. Right, went eighteen and sixteen with a good roster with Hunter Dickinson and his sons and all that. You know, first round picks and everything else. Gone, and then. He doesn't recruit well the next year because his donors are like, you went 18 and 16 with that but roster, that dude. Yeah. And then I think other, you know, players saw that as well. And what what, what did they go to the Elite They eight? went Final Four? Yeah, he was, a, he was a coach of the year and a Final Four guy. Yeah. He was a coach of the year in 2021. He was 8 and 24 this year, got fired. Yeah. Like, things can happen and quickly. quickly. And you don't, 
And the other thing about the the Jonathan Pierre quotes he gave to the Daily Memphian, I don't like that out in the public for Penny because that like that's something that like maybe not every recruit that you recruit will see that. But it is negative but that's, recruiting. That's something that could come back to haunt you. Right. It's negative you know, stories like that. A guy who could have stayed here for three years stayed here for one because it was chaotic and, and cancerous. Right. That's not a good thing for you. Absolutely not. All right, let's uh, let's make a spin on this. Let's talk some positive, oh. and not for the University of Memphis basketball. It's football. It's football. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk some University of Memphis football. It's been a minute. Uh, we've been out of the season for quite a while now, but we did get a – what's the name of that stadium? Simmons Bank Liberty <laughs> Stadium, baby. <laughs> the Sim. The Sim. The Sim. No, it's just a, it's it's a protect bit. the sim man it, protect it, the sim. It's a bit now, so I just have to roll with it. Um, <laughs> we got some new renderings on Monday for what or like the renovation timeline, really? Right. And did you see the renderings? Yeah, the renderings are nice. Yeah, right. So yeah, you can, but rend- but here's the thing about renderings. Renderings are all great. Uh, yeah, you know. Have you that. seen like the was it the A's the A's their Las Vegas yeah, yeah. one? It looks like the damn uh, uh, what's the is it the Opera House in Sydney? Yeah, it like looks yeah. like the Opera House yeah. in Sydney, and it's like like the renderings always look beautiful. Of course, but they're because, still fun to look because at. Because once until you get the funding, you don't know how much of the renderings actually gonna actually come can true. be done. Um, but I, I'm I'm super excited. Can I be yeah. honest about yeah, for sure. about it? Like if if this gets done on the timeline they're talking about, like by the time it we get to 2026, I'm hyped up about that. Absolutely, With it's it's long overdue. You want to know my favorite thing? What? We can get everyone to shut the hell up. Shut the hell up about an on-campus stadium. That yeah. that is the biggest thing for me. Yeah, I've never understood that conversation in the slightest. I think we've had this discussion before. It's a mile and a half down Central from right. the campus. Shut. I mean, it's basically on campus, but whatever. But there's three phases. Looks like phase one will start in May 2024. Phase two will be later this calendar year in 2024 once phase one is done. And then phase three... They're just saying upon securing uh, the necessary funds and matching the funds needed to meet the Smith family's challenge pledge, which is the second $25 because he donated 50 right? and they have to get 50 in return. So the first two phases will be the first 25 The third phase will be the next 25 And that's just sort of after everything gets figured out. Uh, first phase is going to be good for the media. Yeah. <laughs> Eight to ten million. It'll be done before this season. And you'll be moved into the media. Will be moved into a different press box, and you've been up in that press box. Yeah. Nothing to write. Put home every about. put everybody in a new spot. Yeah. I think they'll be happy with nothing that. to write home. About. Phase two, though, if it's done by twenty twenty five or so, that's the one that you'll notice. That's the whole west side of the stadium. Right. And let's see. They say founder suites, uh, private suites, party plaza, which is super cool. Interior looking. area for all fans, and then they'll do the initial the halo upgrades where they're putting the light on the outside of the stadium. Yep. So phase two is the massive one that you want to get started if you're a fan because you're going to see a lot of those changes by the time they get done with it. Yeah. But Do, do you the, know how many seats they're taking out? They're going to take – so they're like, what, 58 right now? They're yeah. going to get down to about 50 by the end of it. Now, when they're doing phase two, and that'll be the t- part During of 24 season, season and 25 and, yeah. season, the whole west side will be shut out, down. Shut down. So they'll have it'll be right around thirty thousand will be the capacity. Yeah. For two seasons. Which it's, whatever, fill it to the brim, fill it to where you can. Yeah. And then move from I there. wish they would cut a little bit more. I wish they uh, would get, I wish yeah. they, I wish they would get down to about forty five. Yeah, but it's a it's a it's a big ass. It is place. It's huge. It's just it's sort huge. of you know But even even taking down nearly ten thousand seats, I think helps a lot. Yeah. Uh, just optically. Yeah. No, I'm, let's, I'm, let's I'm, be, I'm let's glad they're taking out 10. Yeah, let's be honest. Just optically, it's going to make it look a lot better. Yeah, I'm glad they're taking out 10. They need to. Um, if they got it down to 45, it would be sort of ideal. Yeah. But I'm not going to argue over 5,000. 5, seats. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. And, and uh, I know we're talking about renderings and how much they mean and stuff, but it does give you a visual a visual aid for what it will look like. And, and that plaza and everything is super the, cool. The field suites look sweet, too. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Everything looks really, really I'm good. I'm glad they're doing the plaza thing for like, because obviously they sell alcohol. They were one of the fir- very first, really, because it's an off campus stadium where you could sell alcohol. But um, I like the thought of like new stadiums, how they do it, where you have an area to hang with. So you can stand around with your friends, watch the game, right? Have some beers, 
enjoy each other's company instead of sitting in the sun and right. sitting, you know, in the in the bleachers having to lean down to talk it, to your buddies, that type of thing. It, it has more of that watching it's, it at home vibe. Yes, but you're there. But you're there. You're there. So yeah. that's that, I, I like that thought process. Too. You need to do that um, in any modern stadium. For sure. But I, man, I, I got to be honest. It, it, this is one of those things that will help in recruiting. Yes. Um, it will help the fans and their experience, and it'll help show – I don't know where college football's headed. I'm right. not going to act like I know. But a willingness to put money in it. But it shows you have a willingness to invest in your athletic programs. Absolutely. And that could help yep. with potential conference realignment. I yep. don't know where the end goal is. I know that Tigers on Tap talks about it all the time. But that's not really our forte, no. quite frankly. But I know that it helps. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Any other football news? Oh, there is. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Laird Veach says that Ryan Silverfield and his contract, he said, Kenny, can you help me with this? I think he said they've got the money figured out. They've got to figure out the contract clauses and then they're getting closer. But he He says that they're about there. He said the terms are are all agreed upon. Now they're now they're getting to lawyer down to lawyering it up where the lawyer has to draw up the contract. That's where they're at. Yeah. So Ryan's about to get a get an extension. I don't know what that extension looks like. Before the Liberty Bowl, I would have said, hey, this is just extra years, no new money. Right. But now. But maybe he gets a little bit of a raise. I dude, guess that's possible. Me and Kenny were talking about this earlier. How funny is the Memphis Athletic head coach conversation right now? And how much has it flipped in the last six months? Depends who you ask. But it <laughs> has fair. flipped a shit ton, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, Penny's on a warm seat. Don't have to lie about it. Right. And right now, Ryan proved it last year, and he's got to prove it again. Right. But, like, we're not at a point where if Ryan wins eight or nine games, he's going to get fired, no, even no. next year. No. And, and, the, fun, <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the funny thing funny. is, think even, think even deeper about it, Then this is just insane from where we were not long ago. There are plenty of national media outlets and an- analysts that like, are predicting oh, playoff. Memphis to go to the playoff. <laughs> and on the other hand, the University of Memphis basketball program Guys, will play no postseason I, out, I outside know. of the conference tournament. What, what, the one what, game. What's really insane to me, though, too, with just football in general, is how how different like the the range of outcomes next year are insane. <laughs> that is absolutely true. You know what I mean? Like college football playoff, getting there, maybe beating Florida State along the way, doing that oh, type man. of thing, winning conference. <laughs> that is very much on the table. I think a lot of people would predict them to win conference next year in the AAC. Yeah. And that would be where Ryan's sitting there. He's like, okay, give me my money. Oh, by the way, what jobs are opening up? Maybe right. he'll get flirted with by, the, by, by, by those people. And then there's also the thought of like, you crash down and you have three or four losses in conference and everybody's like, fire his ass. Like the range of outcomes next year is so... It's going to be so fun to watch. Yeah. So interesting to watch, yeah. I should say. No, I, have a, I have a question for you about this. Christian and I were talking about this earlier on the phone. Gabe, and, and as a player, like as a, as a person who covers the team, the fans, like last year was, was an interesting year. And I think all of us here at BCM were like, man, there just doesn't seem to be a whole lot of buzz right. about the football program coming off of two, seven and six seasons in a row. You know that, but then also at the same time, like the whole conference realignment talk yes, with and you Memphis mi- you being missed. left out, you missed on that. There just didn't seem to be a whole lot of excitement. As somebody who covers this team, as somebody who talks to a lot of fans, the excitement level that I feel about this season is it like legitimately because the Tigers have a chance, small, uh, albeit a small one. To play for the it's entire bigger than thing. small. It's bigger than small. Well, he's saying like he's saying yeah. like to, they could pl- to play for a chance. Yeah, like, yeah, this is the only time in the history of University of Memphis football where there's where foot, even a yes. smidgen of a chance right. that they could right. play for. I a think national there's that, and I think it's the fact that this roster just looks good, they and they they've retained it better, and everybody else in the conference is SMU's gone, new coach at Tulane. You know, like it's UTSA, just, lost UTSA, Frank no Harris. Frank Harris. Yeah. You just said South Florida may be good, but they, they were what seven and six last year, right? They're First gonna be better. This year. Yeah, they're, they're gonna, gonna be, be good. good. They're yeah. a dark horse to me. They're my when I look at that schedule, they're like the scariest team for me on the road. Yeah. Like outside earlier of Florida first State, half of right? well, season. I, well, in, confer- in conference. <laughs> yes, Kenny, outside of Florida State, for God's sake. <laughs> but clarify. honestly, that Florida State game is not that scary because it's almost a free shot. It's like a free right. shot it's, on the road. No one expects you to win. No, go out there and yeah. play. 
Go make it happen. But that one will be the scary one. But like when you just look around this conference, it's like, who else are you going to pick to win? Right. Go ahead. Try. Pick somebody else. Agree. As a player, do you think the players are more excited this year because of the potential to play for national championship? Do you think that yeah. figures into it at all? Oh yeah. Or? Oh yeah. I think I think I think guys know about it. I was over at that facility last week talking to them. They had a networking night up there, which they do a great job off the field. I know I know I sound corny when I say that, but I brought this up on my show as well. Like I, I everybody talks about graduation rates. That's not even what I would talk about. They have great graduation rates and they have a great team GBA. But beyond that, like the stuff they do with community outreach yeah. through Lauren Hillman and the stuff they do and trying to get their guys in front of professionals in the city so they can have jobs after, like that's something that's never been done here. Right. I find that impressive. But I was over there. Yeah, they're fired up, man. But I think what the staff is trying to pound into their head is don't get, don't get, don't buy into it. Don't get ahead of yourself. Right. Like we know, like even I was talking to Ryan on the show. And a little bit off air as well. Like, think about the North Texas game, for right. example. Like, how hard that was. Yeah. And there could be games like that consistently this year. So, like, just don't get ahead of yourself. Know what's on the table, but don't don't overstress yourself at this particular moment. Yeah. But I think they know that they're the hunted. They're the hunted at this point going into next year. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It should be fun. I'm excited about it, even though we've got, what, six – and a half months until we get there. Still fun to talk about in the meantime. Yeah. But we got a long way to go. Um, we are also going to talk about more football. Football. In the hot three because that's what we do. So we're gonna I love that sport, man. Do you? It's a great sport. Do you? I had no great idea. Great sport. I'm so glad that you do. Um, luckily, Kenny does too. And he knows us well. I know y'all well. He does. I know y'all sweet spot. So I, I believe that he... he goodness <laughs> gracious, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Goodness gracious. I don't even know. How do you even? You just want to throw it to break. Yeah, we'll just throw it to break. We'll be back with the hot three. (laughs) TJ. TJ, before we get started... I want you to give a pat to Trey on his back. He needs it right now. I need you to give him a hug. Trey already man started. Is down bad. Real bad. Trey is down. Welcome to the show. Trey is down so bad right now. I was about 350 yards away from the studio and was pulled over by a Shelby County Sheriff and given a hands-free device ticket. I'm not getting points on my right. Right now, I have three point. I've scored three points tonight, and that is three more points than Jordan Brown scored in 10 minutes the other day. <laughs> savage dude <laughs> savage as my premiums of insurance are going to go up by 50 to 100 percent possibly yeah, I, but I will be going to 201 on may the 20th or whatever 24th at uh, 1 30 p.m i have zero faith in that actually working in your favor i have gone to court multiple times to fight a ticket and literally me just showing up gets it dismissed mm, that that is going to be there waiting on you for sure Tune in to Tigers Untapped with TJ Willis and Trey Lasley every Wednesday at 3 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. Sometimes Penny gets questions that I wish Penny would be like, ah, you know, it ain't nothing, man. It wasn't nothing. You know, we're we're focused on the tournament, whatever. But Penny went into this whole spiel uh, yesterday about a post that he had basically talking about like stuff not being good enough and and then he gets asked about it he's like well man you know people you know they won't be fired and all these type of things and i'm like penny like you literally have been reading facebook <laughs> like you know what i mean like you literally been reading facebook bro but i don't know what that was last night um kind of creating an invisible enemy a, pre- a pretend enemy of this coalition that wants him fired or whatever and I'm like, dude, it's, it's all Facebook talk, man. Like, you don't you don't have to be there, Penny. Like, not only does, does Penny Hardaway not to have to stick his nose in there, I don't really think he is sticking his nose in there. I think people are bringing these things to him. Absolutely. And if, if those people in your circle, you probably need to get those people out of your circle. Tune in to The Anthony Sane Show, Wednesdays and Fridays at 12 p.m. weekly on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. Oh, 
Oh boy, is this time for the hot three? It sure is. It sure is time for the hot three. What do you got, Kenny? <laughs> All right, let's get to Let it. Let me know right now. My energy level is here. I'm ready to go. Hey, do you, do I got you, plenty of a, sleep this weekend. Do you have the horn still as a sound effect? Uh, yeah. Let me get to it real quick. Hey. Okay, hold up. There it is. There we go. That boy. It's been a while. That one's been a time. Cool. Yeah, we did retire him for a while. I know that. Uh, listen, Christian is, hates this song and also <sighs> hates the air horn. So I'm trying not to like overload him with hate in this. Uh, I don't hate the air horns, but God, do I hate that song. The least. <laughs> Leading into the beat, though, it is kind of wild. It's terrible. It's like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, I feel like... Would y'all like me to find a new song? No, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. every time well, I feel Actually, like, he'll say yeah, probably. Uh, you know, like the traditional belly dancer uh, garb? <laughs> yeah. I feel like Kenny's going to walk in there like that every time. That's a... See, that's Ooh. a bad image. That's an image I would Here not I come, want. Boys. That's an image I would not want every time I did a segment. Why haven't you brought this up before? We need to change the song immediately. My <laughs> belly dancing. You're, you, you, either you now, need to, we need to change it or you need to go to therapy. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no one between. Now you know why I don't like this. Yes, yeah, now I get it. Because you get mental images yeah. that you just can't. Bro. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. I can't shake them. Now like I'm I, not gonna be able to shake them. You have to change the song. Yeah, now I see you know, see like the little hat yeah, and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I see it right now. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's get to it. All Topic right. number one. March Madness is here. It means nothing to us. But no. March Madness is here. Kenny, it Kenny, means Kenny, something. What do you mean? I, it means nothing. Can I take this segment and run with it? Can I hijack this segment? Go for it. All right, Gabe. This is what we're gonna do. Call, okay. I'm calling the shots from Kenny on this one because okay. he freaked me out. Um, <laughs> okay. And left me with lasting mental images. So okay. therefore, we are going to take the four one seeds and we're gonna give a percentage of what uh, of, of their. Chance to get to the final four or win no, it no, all? To win it all. Okay. Oh, nice. Let's go final four. To go to the final four? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's fine. Okay. All right. Take it away, big guy. So I'm going to start with UConn. Yep. UConn, it's interesting because I think they're in the East. The East is ridiculous, bro. Yeah, it is. It's nuts. The, the one, two, and the, the one, two, three, and four. You have UConn, Iowa State, Illinois, Auburn. Those are the top four conference tournament winners. Yep. Um, like, how did they all end up in the same region? I think the committee, you know, effed this up royally. I think they should have spread them out at least a little bit. And then you still have San Diego State, who was in the national championship last year at number yep. five. And then at number eight, you have FAU as in final four. Mm-hmm. Like, that is just way too loaded of a... Uh, of a of a side of the bracket, I think UConn really is good though. So uh, <laughs> chances to get to the final best. four, final four. I'm going to go ahead and give them about a thirty five percent chance to get through that bracket, and make it to the final four. And I think I would have had it way higher if they would have spread out like the two, three, and four in that yeah. in that same uh, side of the bracket. I'm going to go to. Should I keep going? No, no, no. I, I'll. I'll, uh, I'll back you up on that one. I'll go forty. I'll go forty percent. Forty percent. Forty to forty five percent on that one. Um, let me take a look at the South Houston. bracket. Houston. Which its number one seed is the Houston Cougars. And in that bracket, for the rest of it, you got Marquette as the two. Everybody, if you if you listen, you know I, I like Marquette. I'm a fan of Marquette. Uh, yeah, there you go on that. Um, <laughs> the three is Kentucky and the four is Duke. So the Blue Bloods yes. running wild in, in the South bracket. I'm going to give Houston, even after their miserable Big 12 championship loss to Iowa State, they only put up 41 points, I'm going to give them a 28.6% chance to make the Final Four. I'm going to go under that 25%. I just, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not as high on them as I should be. I really like them, but at the same time, uh, down the stretch of the season, who have they? They've been out without Jawan Roberts for a while. Is yep. that who they've been out? Or no, he, yeah, he, he just got hurt. He just, he just got, got hurt in the, in yeah. the conference tournament. Yeah. But they've been without another guy. I'm not even. He's a, he's a reserve forward, but they they are a little bit hurt and they have been a little inconsistent. It's and true. my biggest issue with them in the in the tournament is yeah they play great defense but offensively they can just fall flat 41 They're, points in the championship they game. just fall flat sometimes now they may it may have just written that one in and yeah. in the second half they really did write it in um but i'm gonna go 25 percent chance now on to purdue i love purdue you i love purdue. love purdue yep okay. love purdue i'm gonna go as high as 40 percent chance wow to come out of this uh midwest region because Utah State and TCU, Utah State has the Mountain West uh, uh, 
the issue about it. The only team that wins in the Mountain West in the tournament is uh, San Diego State. Everybody else gets their ass kicked. TCU is a very middling Big 12 team. That would be their second round. Kansas is going into the tournament limping their ass off. Limping. Limping. And they got beat by 20 without uh, Kevin McCuller and Hunter Dickinson by Do Cincy. we know if they're available? They'll be available, but they're going to be a little bit hobbled. Yeah. Okay. Um, then Gonzaga is the five seed. They should be like an eight seed. Gonzaga they're not the that five good. Seed. They're a five, yeah, seed, they're five seed. And they're playing McNeese. McNeese might upset them. I could see an upset in Samford, Kansas, and McNeese. Gonzaga. Will Wade's team is nasty, um, And dude. then, like, the best team that they're dealing with outside of that would be Tennessee as the two seed. But and Tennessee lost tough. two straight games. But they lost two yeah. straight games heading into the tur- or heading into the yeah the tournament. And they lost to Mississippi State and looked horrible in that game. And we know Rick Barnes usually it flounders out, at least by the Sweet 16. Yeah. So I like Purdue at, like, a 40% clip here. And the other thing about Purdue is the reason they lost to Fairleigh Dickinson last year and the reason they weren't so good is their guards were not guard play yep. and they're a year older and hey here's a here's an interesting stat you want the best stat of all purdue last year going into the tournament was shooting 32 percent from uh three yeah this year 40.8 percent from three they're number one in the country in that category i love purdue i really do like purdue and they know that they're not going to take the 16-1 crap like you know lightly they're going to make sure that they uh that they get at least to the second week and then they'll go from there I'm going zero percent. I'm just kidding. I mean, it is Purdue, so it's Matt Painter and Purdue. I get it. I get where the skepticism comes from. Um, but no, I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you on forty percent here. I think this is a pretty favorable side of the bracket, kind of like you're mentioning. Um, no one particularly scares me on this side, outside of Purdue, uh, Tennessee being the two, Creighton being the three, Tennessee and Purdue are basically spitting images of one another in the tournament over the last several years. Ironically enough, they did play each other, I yep. think, in the Sweet 16 or round of, thir- round of 32, maybe, uh, a few years ago, and I believe Purdue won that game. Um, but yeah, even with Dalton Connect, who has been incredible this year, SEC, SEC Player of the Year, um, I just see Purdue being the best team on that side of the bracket and probably the second best team in college basketball behind UConn. Um, finishing it out, the west side, North Carolina being the one seed. Um, North Carolina's pretty dang good unless they play NC State. Yeah, they got it. They got a really good draw. They in did. The west. They did. You look down, Arizona, number two. Uh, I'm not really scared of them. Baylor, number three. Eh, that not. would be probably my second, my second uh, highest percentage to make it to the final four out of that out of that of bracket. bracket i like bama too uh mark sears has been incredible this year but it's you know the same thing it's alabama. alabama make uh, shots make shots right that's my that's that's my calling card if yeah I'm nate oates i, I Cle- just got a fat contract extension yeah by he the did way. uh clemson is a team over there that has beaten north carolina this year in the acc uh which makes that interesting potentially if those two teams are to meet at some point but I think it's a, fi- a pretty favorable side. I think North Carolina does have holes. Uh, I don't think they're some impenetrable team by any means. Um, I'll go. I'll go twenty percent. I'll give my lowest percentage to North Carolina out of the four one seeds to make it to no, the final four. No, it's gnarly. In their second round, they'll have Mississippi State or Michigan State. Yeah, I don't like either of those. Those are like that's a scary eight nine game yeah, for are, me those, if I'm North Carolina. Yeah, those are tough because tough it's teams. like Mississippi State just beat the hell out of Tennessee. Yeah, and they're just tough in general yeah. uh totally Josh smith, in, totally Josh smith too, is, he'll he'll get after your ass that'll sort of nullify baycott at least a tad bit yeah and the michigan state i don't know they're not very good right but, but it's Izzo. Right. it's Izzo. so I, i'll give them right around a 23 percent chance to make it through to the final four i think out of that out of the west i'd pick baylor that's yeah. where that's probably where i'm gonna put my money yeah all right. Any surprises, snubs, um, any seating issues that you see? Like who got snubbed and who All right. who's ranked way or who's in this? Seating issues. Yeah, seating very issues. Very. There's one, two obvious ones in my opinion. Iowa State. I know you could say what you want about they got the number the first uh, of the two seeds. Yeah. Right. They should have got in in the one seed line. Yeah. Over North Carolina or Houston. They beat the hell out of Houston Agreed. in the Big 12 championship. And they were second in that conference all year. Like, it was closer than they than they acted like it should have been. Uh, but I guess that the committee sits there on Sunday and already has everybody sort of placed. Mm-hmm. Even though freaking Iowa State ran away 69 to 41, 41. against yeah. Houston. And then the other one, without question, is Gonzaga. 
Gonzaga, Gonzaga didn't even five. win the West Coast Conference, right. brother. Like they're they're an eight or nine seed. Yeah. But I know that their name recognition got them moved up. But they do get like a really hard twelve seed in sure. McNeese State. Yeah. Um. So I think that it may uh it may pay itself forward by the time we get to that. That's going to be the trendiest five twelve matchup yeah. by far. Yeah. Um. But Gonzaga's way overseeded. Snubs though. There's a few that people want to point out, like Pitt, St. John's, like that people are pointing those yeah. out. It's uh, it's Indiana State to me though. Yeah, I don't think it's close. Uh, yeah, I think they're right. the highest rated uh, team in the net ever since the, in the net era. They're the highest rated net team ever to not make the tournament. They were, were twenty eighth, twenty as of I say, low thirties. And what they I lost thought. like six games all year. I thought it was four games or something. I like think that. it was a little more, Maybe five six. or six. Okay. Um, and I know what. But what's really weird about that is Robbie Avila. Have you seen him play? Yeah. Cream, Cream Abdul Jabbar. Yeah. Dairy, Dairy Bird. Yeah. Yeah. Like he would have been a damn darling. Yeah. You would have wanted him to play in the tournament. Sure. I don't know why they left him out. Yeah, I don't, I don't know it, why they left him I out. And put in like Virginia. And right. Like, why'd you leave them out at the hands of some of the teams you put in? It's just weird. Yeah. And I know there were more bid stealers than normal. UAB stole one. Duquesne stole one. Oregon stole one. There's one. NC State stole one. Like yeah. there's a little more. But Indiana State should have been in. They I just I don't get it. I don't get it. They had the Missouri Valley Conference regular season title, and then they lost in the championship game of the tournament. But they were in the top twenty five most of the year, twenty eighth in the net. That just seemed like a, a little that was dis- bad. A little that disrespectful. was very disrespectful. Yeah. Do y'all? Let me ask you this, and kind of hit close to the to Memphis. Were y'all surprised that FAU got an eight seed with where they? Not only end of the season, but, but ended the tournament. Ended the tournament. Ended the season. I mean, they yeah. were out of the top twenty-five. Yeah, I, I, I think I think there was a little bit of recency bias. On yeah, that but one. I never like. <sighs> they should have. I mean, this is gonna sound like really. This is gonna sound kind of dumb, I guess, to some people. Once you get to that eight, nine, ten line, would you want them to be a ten? Right. Probably, Kenny. Right. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I would say probably lower eight, eight, nine. Like, is, they, all those are the same to me, right. though. Very similar. And if they got a ten, they probably have a more favorable match, second round schedule. Matchup, yeah. It's just a weird. It's a weird thing because, like, if you look at the AAC, they are not a high. The AAC is the tenth ranked con- conference yeah, in the entire they country. Good and, but they had that Arizona win and all that, and right. then last year definitely they, propped them up. But yeah. they had the thirty and three season. They won the conference USA last year and still got a nine seed. Last year had a, I, I would think a a worse season. Obviously, this yes. year and they lost the temple, and they lost the right. temple in the semifinals, and got an eight seed. Like it just feels like wh- what was the the parameters in which you put FAU at the eight seed? They, I think they should have been in, but I'm just, I yeah, just got confused by that. I, I don't, I don't really get it, but I, I guess like when it, it just once you get past that seven line, I just don't. It's, pretty it's kind of similar yeah. just sort of throw them where you want it where you need to throw them yeah. eight nine ten sort of the same idea if they i guess it would difference because it's a 10 10 seed playing game for dayton yeah this year yeah, yeah. if you would have put them in that that would have been probably an interesting one i could yeah. i could I, I could have bought that yeah i could have bought that um so they were a little bit overseeded but i guess i just don't care as much when you get to the eight nine right 10 right that makes line. sense all right, topic number two, um, NFL free agency has been crazy already. Pittsburgh has gone nuts. <laughs> Chicago's making some moves that I think are um, show you kind of where their future lies. Um, let's talk about the Pittsburgh situation. They uh, picked up Russell Wilson um, out of free agency or, well, off the waiver. Was it waivers, I guess? Was he free, waived? Free, free agency. Free agency. Okay, One free. year, 1.2 million bucks. Right. He's like, hey, I'm good, man. I'm making 85 million. <laughs> million <laughs> the next three. I'm good, bro. Um, got Russell Wilson. Honestly, I was like, I wonder if that's going to be their starting quarterback next year over Kenny Pickett. Then they trade Kenny Pickett um, and get Justin Fields for a sixth round pick from the Bears. Which is, I guess, sets up. Does it set up a quarterback, you, you know, battle? Is it Justin Fields going to be the guy? No, they they they've already come they out and Russell. said that Russell Wilson will will be but, working with the ones. But if Russell screws around, Mike Tomlin's not just going to give it to him. No, I'll give you that. I think it's more likely that they could battle it out for like midseason. Yeah, if Russell screws around, they could yeah. battle it out for it. I, I think. I think honestly, uh, to me, best case scenario for the Steelers is Russell Wilson comes in this year plays well like obviously not like at an all pro caliber or anything that that is best case scenario for the Steelers right. don't get me wrong but 
for the whole quarterback situation, to me, this is the best case scenario. Russell comes in and plays well this year, but throughout the year, the coaching staff is able to see growth and development in Justin Fields and shows them that they can rely on him for the future. They maybe let Russ walk or sign him to another cheap one-year deal, and then Justin yeah. Fields is able to take over after a year of kind of reset, refresh, getting used to a new system, learning some stuff from a veteran quarterback. Uh, he's had a couple of veteran guys around him. I think when he came into Chicago, it was Andy Dalton and uh, Nick Foles were on the roster. But uh, let's be honest, Russell's a, a, yeah, diff a different, different level. Different level. Uh, Nine-time Pro Bowler, uh, one of the best Super Bowl quarterbacks winner. of the last 10 to 15 years, Super Bowl winner. Um, so I think, that, I think that is what you would like to see if you're a Steelers fan. Russ come in and have success. Justin Fields learn from him and be able to take over the reins next year. Right now, they have one of the best quarterback rooms in the NFL, I would I would argue. One of the better ones as far as depth goes. Not many teams have two uh, starting caliber quarterbacks. And they have both of those quarterbacks for $4.8 yeah, million cheap. this year. Very cheap. Um, so it, it's, it's really a win-win because if Russ takes off and has like a second-half career resurrection in Pittsburgh – awesome for them if he's able to you know kind of coach justin fields up and and raise his confidence level and bring him into a situation where he can return to being a starting quarterback another good scenario for them so overall you gotta love what they did especially uh, getting a sixth for him yeah or giving a sixth yeah. for him and that's it i know people were critical of what they got in return for kenny pickett uh, I think it was uh, also. And then a, Deontay a Johnson, they were and, mad and then, about that one. Right, giving up Deontay Johnson. But I don't to the like Carolina Deontay Panthers. Johnson, nor do I like any pick, and I don't think they're very right. good. So uh, at the end of the day, yes, I get it. Kenny Pickett was a first round pick two years ago, and they didn't get much in return. But it's just the nature of the beast. And yeah. the same thing happened. I don't think Kenny Pickett has it. What does he have that's like a lot? Nothing. That's the thing. Like, he doesn't have like that arm where you just uncork it. You no, don't need not super mobility. athleticism. Yeah, no. So it's like at some point you just got to admit when you're wrong. Right. He has small hands, apparently. Yeah, and he's got tiny hands. See, right. yeah, now we're adding to the negatives. <laughs> um, what about the Bears? So I, the Bears. I, well, but this is what I wanted to say real quick, and then we'll get to the Bears because they, they've done a good job this offseason. Very good. Justin Fields, about as good of a situation as he, as he could have landed in considering the circumstances. And the reason I say that people be like, well, he's going to be a backup. No, why would, why would this be the best situation? Well, Think about the openings, theoretically. Vikings signed Sam Darnold, but they never were interested in the slightest in Justin Fields. They didn't prioritize him, so that was out. Broncos, they have a starting caliber, uh, that starting open, starting spot open, but do you really think that Sean Payton is the perfect guy to bring in and usher a new era with right. Justin Fields in Denver? They were never interested in him. Um, so you got down to the point where you started to understand, like, you know, the media says one thing about Justin Fields and his mobility and his athleticism and, you know, his arm and all the things that he possesses. And, you know, the media thinks very highly of Justin Fields. Clearly front offices, not don't. all of them don't think, uh, yeah. not all of them think that way. So the reason I think that he's in the best spot possible is because once that Falcons job got taken up by Kirk Cousins, there was really one guy out there that loves Justin Fields for Justin Fields. Yeah. And that was Mike Tomlin. Yeah. And he lands in a spot with a quarterback room that was bare. He's the immediate backup. And, you know, Russell Wilson, some people think he's cooked, so maybe he does not play well. He could step in, save the season, and then we're off and we're rolling. And he could be a franchise quarterback from there. But given that there were no openings that actually wanted him to be a starter, this was the best situation for him. Agree. To be, to be completely real with you. Now the Bears. I think the Bears... They've done, they've, an they've done an incredible job. That's another part. This is what I hate for Justin Fields is. Is if he was going to succeed if there. He got, if he was right? Caleb Williams, switch, switch bodies. Right. Oh my God. I mean, I'd feel the, I'd feel great for him. Yep. But Caleb Williams is going to step in with the Bears, and um, defense still needs work. We get that. But um, you have a aging, young still O-line that's doing pretty well. Darnell Wright was great in his rookie year. Yep. You have... Khalil Herbert and uh, Roshan and Johnson Ro and DeAndre, and DeAndre Swift. Swift. Then on the outside, you trade for Keenan Allen and you have DJ Moore. Yep. In the tight end room, you have Cole Komet and you have a good pass catching tight end and Gerald, Gerald Everett. Everett. I I, ju I love what they've done on the offensive side of the ball, and it really is a shame that they didn't do this for freaking uh, Justin, Justin Fields. Fields. This guy was sitting there his rookie year with crusty old Allen Robinson and Dar Darnell Mooney and Darnell Mooney. 
I mean, damn, man. <laughs> hey, with with young quarterbacks, you get picked in the top ten. You got to stack the deck a little bit for yeah. them, and they never did that. And, and Ryan Poles has done a really good job. Yes, uh, and it looked weird last year for a while though, because he made all those good moves, theoretical good moves last off season, and trading the number one overall pick and all that, right. and he got a lot in return. But it, they sucked to start the right. year, so everybody was questioning him. But I think he's done a really good it was job. A, it, it he was makes just, the right moves. It was just a slow. It just had to be a slower rebuild. You know, it just, it just was one that was going to take some time. And I thought they just played like shit. Oh to start yeah, the they year. did. They and did. I think it has to do with coaching too. Right, I agree with that. I, I'm surprised that they didn't make a change in that area. But I would imagine if they don't have success this year, then that will absolutely yes. follow. But flus. Yeah. But you think Caleb is going to be good? Yeah. Yeah. Rookie year good? I mean, dude, he now. <laughs> Uh, DJ Moore and Keenan Allen are the only teammates going into the 2024 season that both had over 1,200 there, yards and six there, touchdowns last year. There's a guy named Danny Parkins who does a uh, show at 670 The Score where my brother works. Yeah. And he was on uh, First Things First, I believe. Is that the one with Nick Wright and all yeah. them? He was uh, talking, and he made a statement that sounds hot takey, but it's really a kind of nothing statement. He said, Caleb Williams, with the things that are being provided to him, has the chance to have the best number one overall pick quarterback season of all time. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. And the reason that sounds hot taking because you say of all time, but when you go look at number one overall picks, they're usually getting drafted to terrible situations. Right. And they may have decent years, but like even Andrew Luck was like 23 TDs to 18, 18 INTs yeah. and threw for 3,600 yards. Yeah. It's like, I, I could see that with Caleb. Caleb Williams could, and what's funny about the Bears, never had a 4,000 yard passer. Yeah. Never have had a 30 plus TD passer. Right. He could get that done. Like yeah. that's that's very much in the realm of possibilities, yeah. but I think it's less about him and more about what the Bears have, and Ryan Poles have done for him. Yeah. They're the most QB poverty franchise of all time. Bar yeah. None. But they, they have never, they, they've, They've never. set this one up for success. Yes, they have. They've never had a good quarterback. Hopefully, in their whole hopefully this whole thing, like just looking at how they've have they've set this up, like they've learned from everything, all right. the t failures, terrible failures in the past. Yeah, because they've literally never had a good quarterback, yeah. not one time in their whole. Jake Cutler is really the best one they've had. Yeah, Isn't that it nuts? is. It's by by far. Because who else would it be? Jim McMahon, just because he, he didn't won a do, Super Bowl. He didn't no, do he didn't a damn do thing. Though. Rex Grossman, because he went to Super Bowl. No, no. he was terrible. <laughs> Jake Cutler is even the only like. Fringe level level Pro Bowl quarterback they've <laughs> yes, ever had. I swear, and that's terrible. It's well, Mitch Trubisky was a Pro Bowler. That is true. Twenty eighteen. Um, Hell yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Tyler Huntley was a Pro Bowler too. It's, it's, so was, that's so was, how you should have responded. So was Gardner. Me. So was Gardner Minshew. Oh, that's that's deserved the mustache. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. So topic three. Uh, let's stay with NFL free agency. What are some other uh, free agent signings that you guys have seen in the NFL so far this offseason that make that have can raised I, your eyebrows? Can I hijack this one too? Well, can I? Well, which you, what you are you going to say? Can you lip it? Huh? Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, okay, you can go ahead. Then. Okay, so we talked about this briefly on your show last week while I was driving to the beach. Actually, I don't know. You probably didn't know that, but I was. And when I when I disconnected is because uh, Anna Ruth's phone came disconnected and my phone ended up connecting the CarPlay. So apologize for that okay um but we <laughs> yeah yeah i hadn't had to throw that one in there um we briefly talked about this on the show last week and i think it is so worth talking about i think the two teams that have really won free agency are the chicago bears and the houston texans we just talked about the bears and i really really like D'Amico ryan's and i really really like cj stroud so can we just spend this segment and kind of talk about the Texans and what they've done and how quickly they've went from one of the worst teams in the league after yeah, having a deal I, with, with you. the Deshaun Watson saga and all that drama and immediately turn it around and what D'Amico Ryans did as a first-year head coach and now what this front office is doing in the offseason to capitalize on this window and the moves that they've made. Uh, they have the Offensive Rookie of the Year and the Defensive Rookie of the Year and uh, C.J. Stroud and Will Anderson. So they go out in free agency. They get to Neil Hunter, who was arguably the best player in free agency. Uh, he's had four straight seasons. Kind of, with, kind of team friendly in a way. Yeah, they did. Two years, 49. Not, not terrible no, for a guy. For an elite his, pass rusher? Yeah. Four straight seasons of 10-plus sacks. Had his career high in sacks last year of 16 and a half. Across from Will Anderson, too. That's right. nasty. It's, great. it's a great... It's one of the better defensive end duos in the league. Uh, they also trade for Joe Mixon who the Bengals were going to cut you can make an argument that they didn't give him the best contract 
three year 27 million but they have a lot of money to spend i think that's beautiful and that's not going to hinder them for long so getting him ensuring that they got him by trading a seventh round pick uh was a really good get for them um they let i believe they let Devin singletary walk yeah damian pierce really kind of fell out of favor with this new coaching staff last year and bobby slowick who we are also both very high on um but i think joe makes him fits Bobby Slowick's system very well because he's a very good pass catcher out of the backfield. He's a good in between the tackles runner. He's a better in between tackles runner than Devin Singletary, and Devin Singletary was great success. in that system. Yeah. Um, so I, and they're very comparable pass catching wise. Yes, for sure. Great move there. Uh, what are, What are some of the other moves they made? Uh, they got kind of Danico Altry. <laughs> yeah, they got Danico Altry. Danico Altry, yep. very underrated defensive tackle. I think there was a maybe they got a linebacker also. I don't know. We we. What's the uh, defensive lineman that got released by the Jaguars? Oh, um, you said his name last week on the radio. Oh gosh, uh, they got released by the Jaguars. I think it's a double F. I think it's FF. FF. Oh, Foley. Foley Fadakasi. I played him when he was at UConn. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. They got I, him. I think they got him as well. Yeah, they did get him. They did get him. Uh, but then they also got Lonnie Johnson in the back end. They signed Jeff Okuda to a one-year deal. Right. They're trying to strengthen up there. They have just literally noticed. Hey, we have a Window. really damn good rookie at quarterback on a rookie deal right. in year two. Let's and capitalize. we have three more years of this uh, money savings. Let's try to go for it. Yeah, Let, let's go for it. Let's surround him with everything possible. Let's get this defense back going and in, in, in the right direction. I really appreciate the Texans though because they have unloaded the clip. Unlike your Cowboys. Aziz Al Shahir, that's the That's another one. Unlike your Cowboys, though. Yes, that is that is very true. Good God, man. But Aziz played under D'Amico Ryan in San Francisco. Yeah. Know who else I like? And I know I'm, who? Do you have any more to say about the Texans? No, no, no. Go ahead. Lions. Lions done a good done job. Done a great too. job. Um, and I think they signed, we've sort of covered, I think, last week a lot of their signings. Yeah. But the biggest one they made last week that not people people are not going to pay attention to very much DJ Reader. DJ Reader at, at D, D Tackle. They were already one of the best run stopping teams in the NFL. But now you have a Lee McNeil's big ass, yeah, and uh, DJ Reader. and DJ Reader in there. Three years, twenty-two million dollars, something like that. And then Which, and two years, twenty-seven. Two years, twenty-seven. Whatever. Yeah. Okay, so that's higher. But he is the best. He's probably with D tackles. He's a top three run stuffer in yes, the NFL, for sure. and it's not even close. And then flanking those two defensive tackles is Aiden Hutchinson and Marcus Davenport. Yes. Who Marcus Davenport signed on a six and a half million dollar deal. I know he wasn't great for the Vikings last year. But let's not forget this was a ten plus sack guy two years ago. I played ago. against him when I was went to uh, try out for the Saints back in the yeah. day. How about that? Yeah, How he about made that? it. Yeah, um, first round pick. But I, I love what they've done too. Rams did an okay job. Who else? I'm trying to think. Bears did really. I mean, the Bears, Bears to me really well. probably the best. The Bears yeah. did really really well. Yeah. Um, uh, Eagles of course did okay. Although people are overrating the uh, Devin White sign. The Devin White sign. Devin White's not that good anymore. Right. And he never really was awesome. He yeah. could never stop the run. He's a bad run run defender. Lions also recently added Kevin Zeitler. Oh yeah, the guard to, to yep. replace. Uh, yep. Jonah, did they lose Jonah, Jonah Jackson, Jackson to, the Rams. to the Rams? For a, yeah. He got a decent deal there. Yeah. The Panthers are embarrassing, by the way. Right. What are they doing? They paid 153 million dollars to two non-Pro Bowl interior offensive linemen yep. combined. Yep. What the hell are they doing? And Robert they, Hunt from the from the Dolphins got five years, a hundred million. million. How nuts is that? That's absolutely insane. Yeah, you know? I mean that's that's just that blows my mind. Now uh, and they also got rid of their best player. We got a we team. we got a cue. Uh, I will remember you by Sarah McLaughlin. Remember you? Yeah. I. W- there we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Holy hell! Tyron Smith no longer a Cowboy. Nope. 13 years. Goes to, goes to the Jets. To the $20 Jets. million dollars worth of that a deal, was, though. That was crazy. That's nuts. That That's was crazy. crazy. That, that dude has an elbow issue, a knee issue. Neck. He's neck. had everything. But I do not for blame, one year. I do not blame him. For one year, up to 20 Tyron million. Smith at left tackle. But Tyron Smith, John Simpson, who was with the Ravens. Mm-hmm. Joe Tipman at center, who's going into second year. Elijah Vera Tucker getting back healthy at right guard. Morgan Moses, they traded for, the, for him from the, for the Ravens. Ravens better get their get their uh, offensive, line, offensive line right. But Morgan Moses to right tackle. Jets have a good old line as long as Aaron Rodgers doesn't go, uh, you know, join RFK as his running mate. <laughs> 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 all right, I think we wrapped on that one. Uh, we appreciate you guys for joining us. If you are watching on YouTube, you can like, 
subscribe and comment there. If you're listening wherever you get your podcast, you can do all the same things there. We appreciate you guys as always. For I have an announcement. In. Oh, oh. We started YouTube memberships. If you want to join and listen to College Basketball Insider Podcast with I mean, our very own Hitman listen, Hoops, join up. Check it out. Hit the join button, four ninety nine a month. Go check it out, man. You get all the inside information on all college basketball stuff. Oh, but where was our damn yeah, pa- paper what, to read the shit said. off? We, we literally. What are you doing? We give this man props nonstop. Where we could have read that for you instead nonstop. of you completely Cut just derailing to the end, just, just derailing the end of the show, Kenny. I'm yep. not a professional. Gosh no. damn it! <laughs> all right, we will see you guys back here next week. Thank you for listening to On the Bluff. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a rating and a review wherever you download your podcasts. Also, like and subscribe to Bluff City Media's YouTube page. Head over to www.bluffcitymedia.co for comprehensive coverage of Memphis sports and how you can become an insider.